Yeah, I think like. This episode is somewhat different, but it does present pretty hard problems. We have here what looks like uh, Kellum Hall. Uh, the notorious Kellum Hall. And apparently, there's been some sort of an accident, because you've been told by the chief that you've received a call, that there's a crowd milling around, there's been an accident, somebody seems to be hurt, and what I'll do is ask you to close your eyes as I continue the description. You haven't been told too much about the accident, except that it's a person who seems to be pretty badly hurt, and uh, if you folks don't get to the scene right away, uh, there might be a great deal of trouble because those kids from the hall are milling around and they're making a great deal of trouble. Now, please turn around, stand up, and here's the scene that comes that confronts you when you come with it. Oh, my God. Call an ambulance. We called them already. Stop. They called them already. Too bad. I don't even know when you first came. Okay. 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 We'll move the people. Y'all take care of the person. Okay. 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 Okay.
you know. Well, this was going to go the wrong way, you see. So I grabbed him and asked him if he knew who the fellow was, did he know his name, did he know his address, this type thing. Okay, I asked him did he know of anyone else who he thought might know who the fellow was. And I tried to advise the young lady, evidently was her husband or boyfriend or something, that she would exclude him to the infirmary in the Amelian. So just stay back and try to calm yourself. And I left it up to Jack. Why don't you? Man, I believe this is the force that the other officers should have been taking. Oh, that's about, how about this critical question about how far I'll, I'll allow myself to be pushed that's sort of been underlying this, this whole session today. In a situation like that, is, is it a different point? you understand what I'm asking? Now you've got a, a person's life mm -hmm. to say. Yeah, and this is like understandable concern by this crowd. Yeah, I agree with you. I, 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 you know, that's a good point. I think that I might take something there where I wouldn't under other circumstances. Because well, I would. hysterical girl, for example. Yeah, I, you'd I, take I, abuse from her. Yeah, it's actually true. the same thing she might say to you on the steps of that, Westcott. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. With a lot more feeling, incidentally, in this kind of situation under Westcott, where it's primarily political. And I can see immediately though, what she's uh, uh, hysterical about. But then again, right there. She might be hitting you, and she might be swearing at you because you're holding on to her. She, she'll say the same words, but you would react totally differently. Yeah. You haven't got your mind on what she's saying. You've got your mind on that hurt person, that, that injured person, mm -hmm. of what you can do for him, how bad is he? You Maybe know? we can you learn something right here. Maybe we can well, learn when, something. When's the ambulance going to be here? You know, like, uh, uh, you're, you're thinking of a lot of things. You're th thinking about the individual down there right now. I mean, sure, you're, you're hearing what she's, mm -hmm. but you're not, shall we say, taking it to heart. Yeah, yeah getting it next to you. But perhaps there's a, a lesson to be learned here that exactly what was being exchanged was exactly the same, maybe a little more violently, like Dr. Bass and Brian. But it was just in where our head was at, the way we were, when we perceived the situation made it a lot more easy for us to take emotional. I think that's a good point. I think, I think one of the things is, well, y'all got all the props, number one, but when we arrive at a scene such as that, okay, we're, we're driving ambulances, the two of us wheel out a stretcher and bring the stretcher in, uh, it uh, it makes us be received in, a, in an entirely different light than, than a man who wheels up in a sedan with blue lights going and then bails out and says, all right, everybody out of the pool. You're right. I'll tell you, it's the man in the street sort of thing, you know, because that's the sort of thing I was getting. Like the, the thing that we did just before, I got a very bad attitude toward the way you guys handled it. Yet this thing, in a sense, you know, the same guy, arm on arm, guy around guy, I felt as if you were doing your job. That, that's my own emotional attitude. Like when Steve grabbed me before and really grabbed my hand, I felt that he was going too strong on me. Yet when a couple of you guys were, you know, holding Val back even just as hard that you were holding me back, I had a whole different attitude towards you. And that, that's something to keep in mind. What I'm thinking the person in the street. This is uh, this is a different situation. Okay, you got this man stressed out and he's bleeding, you know. Okay, you, you're not worried about those people who they're gonna hit you in the back and all this stuff. Yeah, Look where they got a right going. They be throwing bricks and things. They're not gonna throw any bricks at if you're trying to see the spirits and light you. And so a different situation together. Yeah, but the violence occurred just as you see and another thing that I that I saw, see if somebody agrees with me. You know, this was like a difference in perspective, a different way we looked at the scene, right? Now, I think everybody's perspective is a little bit different. Say, going back to the, the conservative speaker, and they're trying to get in Westcott. Now, if I was uh, that conservative speaker's uh, uh, campaign manager or something, I would have seen what you did was perfectly right. They, they, they didn't act strong enough, in fact. You know, they should have cracked a few heads open. But if I would have been, uh, you know, one of the the pseudo-liberals around campus, I would have said, oh my God, police brutality. And, and I think that this the one, this thing brings out a point that it's just from where you're looking at it, you see? This was like a drastically different, but there are there are degrees just to how, how people can perceive and how we ourselves can perceive things. How about the victim? How, how did you feel down there? Well, I, uh, as an actor, I was feeling uh, that I was dying, for one thing. <laughs> no, I was very much on that. But I felt, you know, I had a very kind of good feeling 
uh, the from, police from the police reassuring to you? Even when they weren't, they didn't act as quickly and do all the little first aid things that I would have expected them to. I mean, all the little pulse, I don't know exactly, I don't know first aid, but there are a lot of little gimmicks that you do. They give you assurance. Right, right. Well, I mean, I, know I, what they're doing. Even probably, they don't, probably this character did not have much conscious, he wasn't really conscious of what was going on, except the fact that he was having difficulty breathing, he was bleeding, there could have been internal injuries, that's what I was had in my mind. So when they started to move me, I thought, I've got, you know, things that are messed up inside and they can't see them. It seemed, it was reassuring, but it wasn't, it didn't seem like they took enough time, that they didn't do all the little steps of first aid and things like that. Were this. you aware of the, uh, the uh, confusion from the surrounding crowd? How did that make you feel? And how do you think the police officers handling that? Did that reassure you or make you more concerned or what? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, I think the confusion, I think they handled the confusion. I couldn't see it most of the time, but from what I could hear, they handled it fairly well. I think, I don't think Truthfully, I don't think they put themselves enough into the situation to really do it as efficiently as you would in a real situation. And as, you know, boom, boom, very, it has to be, you know, step by step if you're going to get anything accomplished. I don't, I don't think it was that organized because they weren't into it that much. But uh, I think they handled the confusion as well as they could in this situation. It increase your anxieties? Uh, no, until they started to move me. Until they said, I kept hearing stretcher, stretcher go get the ambulance and stuff like this, and then let's move him. And I thought, no, no, you can't move me. That, I, very, you know, tense when that happened. Yeah. Other than that, it was it was fairly comfortable, but it could have been more so. Well, had like it been handled better. Well, I'd like to find out is... Um, what could they have said that would have given you a, a better grip on your life? I don't know. I don't think... I heard any, you know, it'll be all right, you're not hurt. Yeah, I didn't hear that either. Doctor. Does it do any harm to say or, that? Uh, no, it's you know. funny, because we do it every other yeah, place. We've do done it either. so many times in real, actual calls. We go out of our way. But it's something here. I don't that's, know. That's sort of uh, that's uh, that's very important. I was telling a young lady, I believe your wife or your boyfriend or what have you, that, you know, you were going to be all right and all this stuff. But, I mean, how... I didn't know there were... Not... Got she wasn't the one that was <laughs> <laughs> no, She was yeah, great. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I think she was hard. But there again, you know, like I said, the crowd, you know, being around you would affect you terribly. You know, they're yeah, like, oh, and they're gasping, and even moving them back, I'm sure. Yeah, well, it was lot. good that, you know, the crowd was cleared back, except I, I still would have liked to, you know, have someone, you know, maybe just one guy, one, one cop doing nothing but reassuring the victim, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't know, hey, what in your mind did happen? I mean, did, did you think I had internal injuries, or did you go into it that far, or, or what did you think that was wrong with me? No, we, we had decided that there were two officers that were going to you know, check you, and the remainder of the officers are going to move the crowd back. So my main concern was getting the crowd back and reassuring the young lady. Right. That, uh, if there had been anything, we know not to move anybody if there's any kind of injuries. How come you're lifting the two feet off the ground? Uh? It's just something here. I don't know. We were just trying to get the thing over with. <laughs> you know? We can't right. identify by, by the props. You might you might intend uh, the substance that you have all over you to be blood. I don't know. I couldn't yeah. tell where the blood's coming from. I don't know where it's blood or where it was supposed to be. I think they had a stretch, uh, you know, something <laughs> real for the yeah. policeman to But suppose uh, you fall into a situation where you forgot the stretcher in the station house. You're here without the stretcher. No, uh, that wouldn't happen. Huh? Well, I don't know. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. That's the worst thing happened. <laughs> <laughs> in hospitals. <laughs> now, I know one time, Dave, and I remember the girl we had over there, we didn't, you know, we calmed her as much as we could, and we, we didn't even take a stretcher because we knew, we knew she had some kind of uh, spinal injuries, and we went... It must have took 30 minutes or uh, 45 minutes to get her to the hospital because we took all this delicate time driving at 5 or 10 miles an hour with several patrol cars in front of us, not where we wouldn't have to stop. It's not, if it had been any, a real situation, we wouldn't have moved him if we'd felt that there was any kind of injuries, but it was just something different. Um, I'm me repeating you myself. I hit you, hit you, make me where it hurts. Here is this wild-looking character, bleeding like a pig, right there. Why didn't somebody go over and hold his hand? Is that part of your image of the policeman? Who are the people that were leaning over him all the time up here? Looking at him like a, like a guinea God. pig. Why didn't you say uh, anything? You mean the spectators? Yeah. No, no. no well, I mean, I'm talking about were, the police. Were two the spectators are there to make life difficult for you. And I want well, to find Remember our policeman. first day's discussion by the function of the policeman as a reassuring agent for a man whose life is oozing away. And we're going to have some comments about the first aid aspects of 
because I knew he wasn't oozing away. I knew he wasn't oozing away because he was just as he wasn't dying. I knew he was. Now he's a good actor. Don't get me wrong. He was. You know, if he's laying on the street and I came up, I thought sure he was dying. But as far as being right there. It's just no, not the real one. You, you took his pulse. I took uh, his started pulse. Started taking his pulse. Checked, started checking over throat, his head uh, and so on. Uh, good, good. I went chest. down the other way, but uh, I, I think I heard you say some things to him. I, I don't he, know. I know I started to say something to him, and uh, nothing was coming through. There was too much other noise, so I started moving, moving on down. But uh, Joe, I don't know. Does that happen, um, Woody? You you just said there was too much other noise around. What happens out there if something like that would happen? Is even if there's a lot of noise going on, is there too much noise for you to say something to him then? No. Right. No. I, I don't believe so. It, it, I don't know. Let's see. A hypothetical. Everything in the back of your mind is hypothetical, mm -hmm. and uh, and that 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 bothers you. You can't rely on on, on your senses. I don't know. You uh, you think on your feet out there on the street and everything and you have to do certain things under certain conditions but you don't know you can't repeat exactly what you do under those conditions you have to to act and uh, you have 40 million things running through your mind and you can't you know if you say too much then people you know this person's callous as hell you know you can't uh you, you want to you know be loose and kind of you know joke and but you can't go too far because if you go too far then people gonna get the wrong image there and uh it, it, too far in what direction? Uh, trying to reassure the person, you know, like, well, I How can you go too far in reassuring? I'm, I'm curious. I, I can imagine myself being in an automobile accident, thrown out of the car, flying in the gutter. You're like, oh, just Frankly, a little scratch, uh, you know? Nobody could give me too much reassurance, I can tell you But that. there again, I mean, you know, we're, we're concerned about you. T yeah, okay, oh, great, okay. Uh, you're, you're our main concern, but then you got all these other people around us, right? Okay, and then you start saying, oh, it's just a little scratch, and you got a guy in the back, the hell it is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't really worry about each other people agreed. I'll go along with that. But then uh, you've got... It's I've a got victim to, that is your Right, yeah, the victims too. Oh, but then right. again, the next day in the uh, paper, next day in the paper comes out, you know, a uh, uh, policeman uh, makes remarks, you know, a uh, victim dies or what have you, you know, and just plays it up real bad on you. I've never seen that in my whole, whole he, life of reading very careful reports of handling of accidents. I've never heard a complaint about a wrong diagnosis on the part of a policeman. Could you have been reassured too much? No. 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 Uh, think of it. Has anybody here been in a real serious accident? I've been picking people up since I was 16 years old in ambulances and, and everything. And uh, I, have, uh, I have seen people that, oh, it's just a scratch. Now, assurance is fine unless it's unbelievable assurance. When it's unbelievable assurance, then uh, it's like Jack says, it's yeah. backward. Yeah, you're asking for down here. I want to ask Jack a question, though. It seems like your criteria was the paper and the surrounding crowd, not that person. That possibly that might do some good. Okay, I was concerned about the person, but now we had given the assignment out that uh, two officers handle the person, the remainder handle the crowd. Okay, true. Mainly I'm concerned with the person, but now if I had, you know, ran over there, then this individual, this young lady that I, I was trying to contain over here, she went right with me, and there again, you've got the problem. But, it, but if you were the uh, attending uh, officer to, in the first day, uh, you wouldn't have felt uh, reluctant to have said any words of encouragement because of white, what might come out in the paper or what might be picked up by the crowd. During that time that I was administering, for, no, I would have I would have said what whatever come to my mind that would give him comfort. Right. And you know, pay for it later, if it comes to that. Each each call, you know, is of course is always different. But uh, I know the number I've handled that, uh, like I think you can you can kind of judge maybe what you can say and what you know, like I said, what you can't say. Uh, like I really prefer say if you got a preference over people that are hurt, one that you know a little upset, you know, that's uh, maybe cussing a little bit because. Uh, the heart rate's good, the pulse is up, all the vital signs are really active. Therefore, uh, you know, you know, if you get him there, if he's bleeding, then put the pressure on and then you can you know, get him to the hospital. But you've got one that's real quiet, <coughs> then I get more concerned if you can call, I get more concerned with the person that's real quiet, that's a stretcher case, and the one that's really raising all kind of hell. Because it's really the quiet one, it's one that, uh, I, myself, I really watch. I wonder if I can take this opportunity to introduce a distinguished visitor we have on campus. This is Lieutenant Goulden. He is with the <laughs> University of Florida K-12 
campus police at uh, Gainesville, and by a strange coincidence, he's gone through a course of training and has presented a course of training which uses the very same films that we've been using for the first uh, three sessions, except in his training, it's stretched out over 12 sessions. We've had a fascinating conversation. We have had lunch together, and I'm really very happy that he's here and um, ask him to tell you some of his own experiences using training along somewhat similar lines. So I bring you Lieutenant Golden. Thank you, Doc. 